All right, guys, here we go. So Sam Harris um, was talking to Tim Miller on the Bulwark podcast, I believe it's called. And um, man, he goes inski on Elon Musk. Watch this. Let's linger on this phrase, public intellectual, because sure. yeah, many- <laughs> I'm I mean, thinking so, of like I, Andreessen and uh, yeah, sure. Weinstein. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, I know who you got. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I we can name names if we want to, but um, I mean, some of these guys are friends. Some of these guys sure. are former friends. Some of these guys are now proper enemies. Um, and we, I'm happy to- talk about all of them. But I think, so the phrase public intellectual is, is one that I, I, I will speak happily and without scare quotes, because I think we need public intellectuals. I'm not, I don't think that's an embarrassing label and I, I aspire to earn it. But um, I think it's important to notice about a lot of these guys is that though they are smart, they are not intellectuals, right? They're not attempting to have anything like a, a, a truly honest and comprehensive worldview that they can defend from all sides uh, and that they'll revise uh, in real time in front of you when you push back on some some squirrely part of it um, in a way that that proper ac academics and journalists and real public intellectuals will, right? I mean, this, I guess I'm uh, describing sure. something like an ideal, uh, but it's, um, it, it, it's just, you just cannot say that someone like Elon Musk is an intellectual, right? He's obviously very smart. He's obviously a t talented engineer, but when you prod him and get his take on world events or on the, the future of humanity, you get like 15 lines of boilerplate that he hasn't revised in the last decade and a half <laughs> about you know us having to be a multiplanetary species and blah, blah, blah. Um, and with a lot of these guys, you, you have people whose, whose formative experience intellectually was their first encounter with Ayn Rand and science fiction. <laughs> and uh, then they, uh, you know, for, I'm sure many of them read, but, you know, th they read... Um, Quite idiosyncratically, they're they're, they're self-taught in basically everything, other than in some cases computer science and and you know maybe you know in Elon's case engineering. Basically, his point is like when they were thirteen years old, they read an Ayn Rand book and they were like, "Yes, this answers everything. Selfishness is good, actually." Oh my god! Imagine never evolving out of your cringe teenage libertarian phase. I mean, I think that's a rite of passage for a lot of awkward young white dudes is a libertarian phase and uh imagine never evolving out of that because that's the, what the whole doge bullshit is about with vivek and elon musk is hardcore libertarian economics but the funny thing is the appeal of trumpism in 2016 when he ran the first time was that it was anti-libertarian economics it was more populist economics you know i'm gonna protect social security i'm gonna protect medicare for example or i'm gonna stop the outsourcing like, that's what Trump said in 2016, which made Trumpism unique and different from Mitt Romneyism, right? But Trump didn't govern like that. And now Vivek and Elon Musk are like, we are uh, going to change the ideological direction and bring it back to original Republican politics. Which, again, that's what Trump, that's how he governed. But the thing that made Trumpism interesting in 2016 was that it was more populist, which is the opposite of Ayn Rand, right? Anyway, let's keep going. I think he's largely self-taught. And a lot of these guys show all the the scars of being autodidacts. And um, yeah, it's not to say that that I'm not advocating for mere credentialism. I'm not saying you need a PhD in the thing you talk about, and you can only talk about that thing. I mean, obviously, I don't observe those boundaries intellectually myself. But some of us ha have internalized the standards of of academic and journalistic in integrity in a way that others haven't, right? And the, these guys are have been outside cats. I mean, I, I, there are probably a few exceptions here, but when you're talking about somebody like Elon. Talking about somebody who, who who never internalized anything as a standard of of ethical or intellectual integrity, <laughs> apart from what just got hammered into him as his advent during his his adventures in tech, and you know now and in his case perhaps more conspicuously than any other, we're seeing the total derangement of a personality based on social media addiction. I mean that that is in fact what you see with Elon. He is a Twitter addict, uh, so much so that he felt he needed to buy the platform, and now he has this this. Um, you know, free speech evangelist gloss on what he's up to, but really what he's up to is, you know, um, snorting ketamine and and tweeting at all hours of the uh, the day and night. Holy shit. Absolutely wrecked. God damn, bro. And I have no doubt every word of that is accurate. This is his influence on our politics that it's, you know, it like there's a lot of ketamine in the White yeah. House. I keep, keep hearing about ketamine. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, one, one hopes he's he's mitigated it uh, of late, but it's it's I mean, his his behavior on Twitter is is obviously, palpably, visibly deranged. I mean, this is the this is the Trumpification of our culture, right? This is the Trumpification of our culture. Here's a billionaire oligarch 
and he sees a different billionaire oligarch who's willing to ha who's who's able to have no filter and still get people to like him and win the White House. And he thinks, well, I, I can do the same thing. The problem is Trump's charismatic. You're not <laughs> right. Like Trump has his little I mean, excuse me. Elon has his little weird fanboys. But the idea of him being able to, like, win a presidential election is preposterous. So it's it, he's acting like Trump, but with none of the charm and none of the humor. Right. And so it's just cringe. It's just you're a fucking 4chan message board. Like, that's what you are. You're an awkward teenager who can't get his dick sucked. And you're posting lay epic memes online. Like, that's what it is. And it's so pathetic. He yeah. signal boosts Pizzagate lunatics knowing who they are. Uh, he knows who they are because I and others have told him who they are. Uh, and yet he feels he has absolutely no compunction about, you know, he, he thinks he's doing a service to humanity by boosting to 200 million followers, obvious lies and conspiracy theories and making some of the most odious online trolls even more famous. And also, by the way, yeah, there's been a colossal uptake in outright Nazi propaganda on the website. More on that tomorrow, by the way. I have a story on that tomorrow. But massive uptake in outright Nazi propaganda. So yeah, he's made Twitter just this giant sea of misinformation and conspiracy theories and extremism, and they're the ones who get signal boosted, and so those ideas proliferate and spread far and wide, and it's creating tremendous damage. Tremendous damage. Declaring war on actually normal people who, for whatever reason, he, he's gotten on the wrong side of. Yeah, so I guess then the question that I have about that, um, that, it's just hard for me to wrap my head around is, is it just, is it simply contrarianism to the dominant culture? Is it, there, is it, there was an opportunity like that Trump is in some ways, you know, a vessel that you can just grab onto and gain influence with in a way that like you couldn't with a more traditional politician, I, just because, and there had to be something like, it's not just Elon, right? Like there is, and some of these guys like David Sachs, I guess, was always always right. been a Republican. But most of these people. But, but he's another one. He's are, like a self-taught expert on the Ukraine, right? I mean, and, yeah, and right. He, he either knowingly or unknowingly is recycling Kremlin talking points. Yeah. He'll never put himself across the table from someone like Ann Applebaum or Timothy Snyder or anyone who knows anything about Ukraine. Um, and if it's, it's, just, it's just not honest. I think the thing that made Sam Harris snap with these people and finally be done with them is the COVID bullshit. Because, look, he's a neuroscientist, right? And I and by the way, I have many disagreements with Sam Harris for the record, but, um, you know, he's pro vaccine. He's pro vaccine. He basically views it like if you're anti vaccine, you've gone down a rabbit hole of sheer conspiracy theories and idiocy. And he saw everybody in his friend group, the IDW, he saw all of them slowly but surely lose their minds and have their brains melt out of their ears over COVID stuff. And he's sitting there like, are you guys really this fucking stupid that you don't know that vaccines are a good thing and vaccines work? Are you really that dumb? And it was from then on that he really was like, okay, open the gates of hell and unleash on these idiots because they're clowns, right? They're clowns. The other thing is they're all power hungry too. They're all power hungry. They want to snuggle up close to Trump. They want to get close to power. Um, and if you really want to know what the deeper purpose is, go read about Curtis Yarvin because that guy is uh, sort of like their their ideological thought leader, right? And what he wants to do is set up these like libertarian dictatorship fiefdoms around the country where you're ruled by corporate overlords, right? And that I think ideally is exactly what a guy like Elon Musk wants. And to snuggle up to Trump, he feels like maybe we'll be able to make some of this stuff happen. So anyway, man, he went in. And as I'm sure all you know, uh, MAGA on Twitter was losing it and hating on Sam Harris and Elon's little pathetic simps were hating on Sam Harris. Again, I have many disagreements with Sam Harris, but this ain't one of them. <laughs> hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.